good afternoon. Um, I'm going to talk about traces of Hudhudni Itkak, or uh, the Hudhud epic of the Itkak people in Ifugao. So, first of all, there are some acknowledgments due to the people whose names you can see on this slide. And let's start. So, Hudhud is a relatively well known epic chant performed in a number of uh, central and southern municipalities of Ifugao province, and it was proclaimed as a remarkable example of the oral and intangible uh, heritage of humanity by UNESCO in 2001. Uh, Hudhud is a predominantly female tradition. It is sung by a lead chanter uh, who narrates the events of the story and the chorus, uh, usually two or more people, who finish the line with formulae presenting characters' names, place names, and rhythmic fillers. Uh, the tradition has very strong ritual connections, uh, and performances occur only in a variety of important rituals. As has been shown in Dr. Maria Sonikovich's works, uh, there are four situational categories. Uh, the first one is hoot hoot for rice harvest, uh, then hoot hoot for hair cutting ceremony, uh, hoot hoot for funeral or secondary burial, and the last one, hoot hoot for uh -huh. wedding, is uh, probably extinct by now. And Hudhud as genre is severely endangered. There are just few lead singers uh, who are still alive. Before we proceed to uh, talking in more detail about Hudhud, uh, I should say a couple of words about uh, the languages spoken in the province. Uh, actually, there are at least seven languages uh, spoken in Ifugao, and they belong to two distinct um, linguistic groups. The first one is Central Cordilleran, uh, the other one is Southern Cordilleran. Um, the first group, the Central Cordilleran languages in Ifugao, uh, include four closely related Ifugao languages. Uh, it's Duale Ifugao, you can see it uh, in the map on the slide, in the area on the left, uh, with the centers in uh, Kiangan and Hungduan. The other one is Amganad Ifugao, spoken in the area on the top, with the major centers in uh, Banawe and Amganad. And the two uh, uh, last languages, Batad and Mayuyao, are actually lumped together here in the map, in the area on the right. Um, uh, the vast majority of the population of the province of Ifugao belongs to one of these four groups. On the other hand, uh, the second group, major group of languages in Ifugao is Southern Cordilleran languages. Um, <coughs> they uh, include three languages, uh, Kalanuya, which was, uh, has been mentioned once uh, today, uh, Kalei and Yatuka. On the map you can see the area uh, populated by Kalanuya, Yatuka and Kalei speakers. The area, as you can see, spans across three provinces, uh, Benguet on the west, uh, Ifugao on the north, in the north, and Nueva Vizcaya. Uh, the most uh, number of speakers uh, resides in Nueva Vizcaya. Kalanuya <coughs> uh, has four dialects, uh, northern, uh, central, uh, southern, and uh, western, or Benguet dialect. There are approximately 100,000 speakers of this language. Uh, as for Kalei, uh, uh, there are just, um, it is spoken only in two barangays, Antipulo and Pula, in Asipulo municipality of Ifugao. Uh, the approximate population according to the, um, of these two barangays according to the census of 2010 is 2,700 speakers. And finally, uh, the Yatuka language uh, is spoken in another two barangays, Amduntug and Nungawa, which are adjacent to Antipulu and Pula, where Kalei is spoken. And the approximate population of those two villages is also 2,700 2, speakers. Um, um, Yatuka is not recognized in ethnolog or glottolog as a separate language, and it is only mentioned as a dialect of Kalei. However, uh, they have, those two groups have distinctly separate ethno-linguistic uh, identities. Uh, the first uh, description of, Yatuka, of the Yatuka language was made by me as uh, my PhD uh, research. Um, so, uh, going back to Hoothood. Uh, this genre is mostly known in two closely related languages, Tuali Ifugao and Amganad Ifugao. 
uh, they belong to the same branch, uh, the Central Cordillera languages, as I've already mentioned. Um, however, Hoodhoods are also sung in the Yatuka language by speakers of Yatuka as well as speakers of Kalei. So, uh, if a lead singer of Hoodhood comes from the Kalei speaking region area, they would uh, sing it in Yatuka only. There is no such thing, apparently, as uh, Hoodhood in Kalei. And all the published translated texts of Hoodhood records were made in Tuali-speaking areas of Ifugao province. Most were published by Francis Lambert in the 1960s and by Lourdes Dolawan and Nicole Revel in the 1990s uh, in the Ateneo Epic Archive. As for Yatuka Hoodhoods, there are three transcribed Hoodhoods, uh, three transcribed texts in preprint in Yatuka without any line breaks or translation. And finally, there are six transcribed and translated records that were made by uh, Dr. Stanikovich and more recently by myself. Uh, apart from these three languages, Tuali, Amganet, and Yatuka, it seems to be a common knowledge among the local residents that there is no hoot hoot in any other language. So, for example, when I ask the direct question, do the Kalanguyas have hoot hoot, I would usually hear a negative answer. Uh, and it stayed the same way until April 20th of 2016 when I was recording a rice harvest hood hood uh, sung by hood hood soloist Alfredo Bumainin in Amduntug. Uh, here, you can, here you can see him on the picture in the middle. And uh, there were a couple of other people in the room who asked him the same question, do the Kalanguis have hood hood? And quite unexpectedly, he said, yes, they do. And it's called hood hood need kak. So, uh, who is Alfredo? Alfredo Bumainin. Uh, he is over six years old and he's a native Kalanguya speaker, originally from Barangay Liwan in Asipulo municipality. And now he, uh, now he resides in Amduntug. And he is a hood hood soloist, however, apparently not practicing anymore because his family and by extension himself are born again Christians nowadays. And later, uh, on a later occasion, I interviewed him about the hood hood need cock that he mentioned. According to Alfredo, he heard it from a woman whose name was Indayu around 1962 in Barangay Kamandag, uh, near Sitio Takak, which is in Barangay Namal. Uh, these two barangays are within the same municipality of Asipulo in Ifugao. Alfredo at that time was a bachelor and um, um, the place, uh, uh, Kamandag, is about half a day walking distance from Amduntug. Uh, Alfredo went there to help uh, harvest rice, and there were many people, among whom was uh, that lady in Dayu, a, a Kalanguya speaker. And while harvesting, Alfredo heard her singing a hood hood on one of the days of the work. Um, uh, also, Alfredo mentioned that in Dayu was around 92 years old when she died, and uh, probably around uh, between 72 and 82 when Alfredo heard her singing, singing the Hood Hood. Um, later, Indayo told the story of the Hood Hood to Alfredo, and he mentions that it is similar to that of Hood Hood, uh, Rice Harvest Hood Hood in Yatuka, uh, with certain differences in the middle, but um, <clears throat> the same wedding scene at the end. Um, Alfredo describes the intonation of her hood hood as soft or slow. Uh, the Tagalog term uh, that was used is malume, as opposed to fast or uh, mabilis uh, intonation of uh, the Atuka hood hoods. And what's important is that, uh, according to Alfredo, the lyrics, the words of that hood hood were in Kalanguya, not in Yatuka, <laughs> not in Kalei, or not in Tuali. Um, um, Alfredo was able to sing um, two short excerpts uh, from uh, Indayo's Hood Hood from what he can remember. And I was able to record uh, those two excerpts. Uh, there are three and six lines, uh, respectively. Um, so the question now was, who are the Itkak? And how come that uh, normally you do not hear anything about them when you're in Kiangan or uh, in... Uh, um, uh, uh, in some parts of Asipulo, uh, uh, populated by Kalei and uh, Yatuka speakers. 
Uh, now, most of the information you can see on this slide uh, was obtained through Marlon Martin's assistance. Uh, uh, Marlon Martin is the head of the local NGO Save Ifugao Rice Terraces Movement. And um, he happened to visit the area of the Itkak in February 2017, where he asked around about uh, the Itkak. So um, what we were able to find out is uh, that the Itkak are res residents of city Takak, uh, it's how it's pronounced in Tuali, Fugao, or Tekak in Kalanguya, or Tokak in Yatuka. And Takak, city of Takak, is located in Barangay Namal, a Cipolo municipality. The isolect that used to be spoken in Takak is mutually intelligible with the surrounding Kalanguya dialects. However, it has a different intonation uh, and some lexical units. Uh, Itkak is said to be as far from Kalanguya as Kalei from Yatuka. Uh, the Itkak people apparently have or used to have a se separate self-identity. Uh, they were terrace build uh, rice ter terrace builders, unlike uh, the rest of the Kalanguya. Now, this fact is important because uh, hoot hoot chanting is closely related to rice agriculture. So, having rice terraces um, uh, could open the way to having an um, uh, epic tradition based on it. And there are probably th just three remaining Itkak speakers. Uh, one of them is actually the current barangay captain of uh, Namal. Alfredo Bumainin also claimed that people in Takak used to be all Itkaks. Uh, however, nowadays they, what they speak is mixed uh, with Kalanguya, Ilocano, and Ayangan. Ayangan is an umbrella term for speakers of all Ifugao languages except for Tuali, which is locally used. Um, on this map, you can see the locations of Barangay Amduntug uh, in Ufugao province, and it's uh, on the top, the topmost star. Uh, uh, Amduntug is where uh, Yatuka is spoken. Then uh, you can see the location of the adjacent Barangay Antipulo, uh, where Kalei is spoken, and the approximate location of uh, City Takak in Barangay Namal, um, where the uh, alleged uh, Itkak language is spoken. Uh, next, I tried to find if somebody else could provide uh, any inf other information on Indayu or the Hood Hood Need Kak that Alfredo mentioned. And the next person who confirmed what Alfredo told me was Appin Gumangan. Uh, Appin was uh, around 90 years old when she passed away um, just a few days after my interview with her in August 2016. Uh, she was a Kalei speaker from uh, Barangay Antipulo, uh, and probably she was the most knowledgeable among the uh, Hood Hood lead singers in Asipulo. Um, she told that she met in Dayu in City of Takak around two to three years after World War II, and uh, up and went to Takak with friends and relatives for the same uh, with the same purpose to help harvest rice, and. That at that time, Indayu was already married, but still young, probably in her thirties. Uh, up and heard Indayu singing Hud Hud Nipagi, Rice Harvest Hud Hud, on one of the days of the work, and up and even joined singing as a chorister. And uh, she also mentions that uh, that Hud Hud was sung in Kalanguya, not in Yatuka, not in Kalei or uh, Tuali. Appin also sang a couple of lines uh, as a sample of what she heard then, uh, and the melody seemed to be the same as what Alfredo sang. However, unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to record it on that occasion. Um, the next person from whom I found something about Ndayu was Gayan Timikpao Dulnuan. She is around 90 years old, and she is a Kalei speaker, resident of Barangay Pula in Asipulo. She is a hood hood chorister. She is not a lead, lead singer, and she's the last native make uh, native thread maker in the municipality, probably in the whole province. Uh, uh, she met Indayu in Barangay Pula, uh, where uh, Indayu came to attend a wedding. Uh, that happened some time before World War II, and Gayan was still a kid at that time. Uh, she just remembers that Indayu was beautiful and a great dancer. 
And she also heard Indayu singing in Hood Hood. However, she, uh, however, Guyan wasn't able to provide any further details on the language or what kind of Hood Hood it was, because probably she was too young, or uh, too much time has passed. Um, now, um, I have two short samples of what is what's supposed to be Hood Hood Need Cock as. Uh, Alfredo remembered it, Alfredo Bomainin remembered it, and uh, having a sample of what's supposed to be that hood hood, we can compare at least the melody in it with the melodies uh, employed in Tuali and Yatuka hood hoods. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any samples of hood hood in Amganad, if you go, so we can just uh, compare only Tuali, Yatuka, and what's supposed to be Itkak. In all three, uh, the melody, as you're going to see in a moment, is quite different. So uh, here I'm going to play one-line excerpts from three different Hood Hood records to illustrate it. The first one is from uh, Tuali Hood Hood, published in the Ateneo archive, uh, Epic Archive, by Lourdes de Lawan and Nicole Rebel. <laughs> Now the second one is um, from uh, Yatuka Hood Hood, which was recorded by me in 2016. And um, actually, in most Yatuka Hood Hood records, there are two melo uh, two melodies. Um, um, usually singers start uh, singing it with melody A and then later uh, halfway through they switch to melody B uh, and then switch back uh, before ending the uh, performance to melody A or uh, sometimes it happens the other way around sometimes they start with melody B then switch to melody A anyway there are, here are the uh, samples of the two melodies <laughs> And the second type of the melody for Yatuka Hood Hoods. And finally, I'm going to play uh, the first sample I was able to record from Alfredo. Uh, this is a uh, three line excerpt from what he remembers as Hood Hood Need Kak. All right, so um, um, Alfredo, uh, who sang it, uh, was trying to, I'm not sure if it's uh, uh, all in Kalanguya, but he tried to at least imitate uh, the singing in Kalanguya, so you can see that. Uh, he's, he's singing Ganhaden, which is uh, Kalang the Kalanguya pronunciation as opposed to the usual Yatuka Ganhaden. Um, here I have uh, the second sample, uh, also sung by Alfredo, but uh, it's a longer one. 
six lines long and well, probably I don't have enough time to to play it right now. So uh, to sum up, uh, Hoot Hoot is uh, known to be sung only in three languages, Tuwali Fugao, Amgana de Fugao and Yatuka. And the existence of Hoot Hoot in any other language is usually denied. Uh, however, there are three oral accounts of a Hoot Hoot song in a Kalanguya speaking area by the same soloist on different occasions. And according to two out of uh, those three accounts, uh, the, that Hoot Hoot was sung in a previously undocumented Isolect, Itkak. Uh, there are no mentions of Itkak in any literature, uh, as far as I know. Uh, it seems that there are just few Itkak speakers alive, and so uh, fieldwork to document and describe that Itkak Isolect is urgently needed, as it is highly likely to disappear uh, rather soon. Um, as for Hoot Hoot Need Kak, uh, if it indeed existed uh, in the past, it's most likely extinct by now. However, we can try to gather some further evidence from other personal witnesses who might have heard that Hoot Hoot performed. Uh, however, there are some major issues involved uh, that might make the fieldwork in Barangay Namal rather difficult. First of all, it's one of the remotest and most impoverished areas in Asipulu municipality. Uh, the roads are really poor and there is no electricity. And second, the area is infiltrated by the NPA, the New People's Army, um, who are recognized as a terrorist organization in the U.S. and uh, the European Union. And in fact, uh, in, uh, in February of 2017, there were clashes uh, between the Philippine Army and the NPA fighters in Barangay Namal, um, uh, so more than 300 residents with children had to flee uh, to evacuation centers under gunfire. Um, so that's all. Thank you. Um, no, I haven't. I, yeah, unfortunately, uh, it had to be written in Russian. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to translate it first. If I send you my email, you send me a PDF. I can read Russian. All right, sure, sure, sure. So I'll see you in Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I was wondering how do they pass, the soloists pass the knowledge to the next soloists, the next generation? Okay. Uh, well, as far as I know, they, um, an aspiring hood hood solo singers, singer, um, well, first they become a chorister. First they ju just uh, listen to the performances, then later they, when they're feeling that they are capable of uh, supporting the line, they can join as a chorister, and uh, as time passes, um, I think they just master um, the whole tradition. Although it's actually a long process because uh, most uh, lead singers are uh, women, uh, uh, around I don't know, 50, 60 and, uh, years old and older. So it takes um, decades for people to master it. But uh, of course nowadays it's, um, I don't think it's going to survive for within the following 20, 30 years. Yeah, they've been saying that about cigarette rituals since 45, so well, as yeah. long as yeah. it's there, it's always yeah, got probably. a uh, Every generation declares this is the last one. It's been now getting on to a century. But um, <laughs> I was going to ask how, I know very much that the Tuali speakers see themselves as a kind of aristocracy within the Ifugao, mm -hmm. and that the Kalanguya are, are they even deny, often have long time denied the existence of mm -hmm. Kalanguya. And, uh, and are seen as sort of culturally lesser. Mm -hmm. So how does the Twali respond to the idea that there's a Kalinguya speaking group, Yatak, who sing a hood hood? Oh. The thing is, actually, well, from my own experience, most Tuwali speakers don't even recognize uh, that there are sev several different groups within the Kalanguya uh, speakers because uh, they, they refer to speakers of all uh, southern uh, Cordilleran uh, languages or isolects or dialects, whatever you call them, as Kalanguya. But so mostly, uh, or uh, there is also a term, uh, Hanglulu apply to residents of Asipulu. So most Tuwali speakers that I know of uh, don't uh, even know about the existence of Yatuka and Kalei as opposed to Kalanguya. And 
Oh, well, I'm not sure how to answer your question directly, but uh, the thing is probably I stayed more in Asipudo among the Tuka speakers, and what I can say is that uh, the Tuka singers um, consider themselves as the original ones uh, when it comes to Hood Hood, and uh, they think that sometimes uh, they express the idea that everybody else copied it from them. I was just wondering because uh, there's this conflict about the Hood Hood, mm -hmm. that regardless of the ethno linguistic group, mm -hmm. the, when they perform the Hood Hood, not ordinary singers could do it. Do, are you aware of that? What, what do you mean by ordinary singers? Uh, my point is, I mean, normally the Hood Hood singers mm -hmm. are women. Uh, with no husband or spinster, because they believe that when they they might invoke the spirit of Buga, it is a very tragic uh, story about Buga, that they might get the negative uh, spirit that if you are married, your husband would die. Well, uh, I. Among the Hood Hood lead singers that I knew, there were uh, women, uh, elderly women uh, who are widows. There were women with husbands. Uh, there were uh, homosexual males. There were males with uh, wives. So it's predominantly still more often it's uh, elderly women, but any kind of uh, lead singer. Uh, normally before the practice of Hood Hood, I mean, as far as, I mean, the information that I, I'm, Sorry, I'm not, yeah. not non-academic or non-things about it, but uh, that's the. Uh, I mean, living in the area, Asipulu. I went. I've mm -hmm. been in Asipulu for quite some time in '97, okay. and actually, your photo of Timmy Pao, mm -hmm. I have a photo of her with him. No. '97. So. Um, um, well, it's a, it's a possibility, definitely, but the thing is, what kind of data do we have to uh, support it? So I can't comment on this because I don't have any data. That's uh, according to Manuel Dulawan, who's a Ford grantee. Oh, it was a, yeah, I know him. <laughs> I know him. How much time did you spend in uh, oh. your field work, and did you refer to Nicole? Uh, at Ateneo, or is this something you did after your field or, or before your field work? Uh, I spent um, around nine months altogether in uh, Ifugao in several trips uh, between 2015 and 2016, no, 2014 and 2016. Um, um, so, as for Nicole Revel, I, well, I, Oh, sorry, what, what was your question about Nicole Revel? Did you refer to Nicole Revel in Ateneo first before you went or after? After. After. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I was familiar with some of her works uh, before that, but uh, uh -huh. um, when I started my PhD, I started to look into it uh, in more detail. Okay. One more question. Do those singers understand the words they're singing? Uh, the lead singers and choristers, uh, as far as I understand, normally do, but it's not supposed to be understood by other people because it's sacred tradition and it's supposed to be the language of uh, the gods. Uh, so it's partially archaic. So there are many words which are which used to be used by uh, in uh, in uh, everyday language, but are not used anymore. And partially it's a sacred language, so there are some words which uh, have never been used in the everyday language. And there are some grammar changes as well, uh, if you compare it to what, uh, how, the way they speak uh, daily. But as for the lead singers, I think they do understand, yeah.